阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Today we'll continue on the treaties on response and retributions, the last part of the、um, cruel and petty section. To use power to reduce good persons to servile or low status. Arresting innocent people, engage in human traffic to trick and deceive simpletons.、Mm. So this topic, we have、uh, two sections to talk about. The first one is people using, you know, standards of people has、um, perverted.、Uh, people who are supposed to be, what it was supposed to be kind, supposed to be just, supposed to be、um, compassionate, has been.、Um, Used as a butt stop for a joke. For example, in school, you know,、um, it's it's funny if you're being good to people. Instead, you know, the people worship someone who use you know power to bully others,、uh, who you know use their you know、um, intimidating physique or you know influence to to bully others to make others do what they don't want to do. They think this is the right way to do it.、Uh, you know, to be fear is always better. Than to be loved, so this kind of mindset is perverted.、Uh, the standard has been twisted、um, in that way, and it gets worse and worse as we go into the、um, centuries、uh, to come, because people are getting more、uh, more away from the teachings of kindness, teaching of compassions, and they are not seeing any more examples. Rather, they see people doing whatever it takes to get what they want. You know, to be.、Uh, Relentless to be reckless to be、uh, manipulative to be、um, you know as bad as they can be because the world is bad so they will be bad.、Uh, nothing as if they don't have、um, how does it don't have any choice as if there is no such thing as consequences in life. Right, even with consequences, people might think you know this is normal. You know, like、uh, or they belittle it because it hasn't happened to them. And they took the decision to, you know, hurt others,、uh, just to, you know,、uh, benefit themselves. So this kind of, you know, we call it corruption of, you know,、um, standards yeah, or falling standards of、uh, what makes a society works is、um, very disturbing, and unfortunately, it's spreading wide and far. Uh, in every corners of the world, not just you know one, not just east and west, not just、uh, one culture, one society, one country. It's a, it's a worldwide thing. It's it's sharing、uh, among everyone else. Of course,、um, there are always you know good family educations.、Uh, if you have the fortune to have this kind of good education, good sample by good education, I don't mean PhD, masters, and all that. I mean Actual example shown by your family, from your parents, your elders,、um, how to you know treat people with respect, with love, you know how to be、um, actually a good person, not just、um, talking about it, but actually showing you the example.、Um, that is what matters. You know that that is what really solely needed because people. Are getting short-sighted with, you know, well, number one, the collapse of, you know, having a faith in their life. It's, it's through, you know, getting more materialistic, getting, you know, only exposed to the elements that are、uh, short-sighted in nature. You know, pleasure for now, and who cares about what happened when you're old? Who cares about what happened to others? As long as you have fun for now, as long as you get what you want, who cares? What you did in order to get there, who you hurt in order to get there.、Um, but as we learn in this book, hopefully we understand. If anything else, we don't understand anything else. But at least we understand 
there is always consequences in our actions. We cannot escape from it. Uh, we are suffering from it. We will suffer from it if we have a lot of merits. Even this lifetime, no one can touch you. This will come to you one way or the other. There is no escaping it. Understanding this will naturally enforce a certain restraint on our actions. Hopefully, we can change our life around for better. Actually earning respect from ourselves to ourselves, of course. You know, do what you say and um, discipline and all that. And actually treat people like people and actually, you know, treat them with respect and understanding. Uh, even with, you know, a lot of negative news, negative reactions or negative actions, you know, people humiliate you, people doing um, harm against you, we can still stand there and still able to understand cause and effect while suffering from this. Able to understand, like, you know, what we mentioned this Sunday from Brother Bullying's talk, um, people have their own circumstances. They have not seen any better. They don't know any better, and hence they can't do any better. All they see is people stepping on other people in order to, you know, get some major money, drugs, or, you know, maybe, you know, pride, whatever. You know, trying to save face, trying to appear superior. All this mindset, you know, it can go from the lower rung of society to, you know, even among the richest people, among the upper class. Those kind of, you know, you right, I wrong, and blaming people or, you know, setting an enemy, you know, politicking and all that. All this is because people don't know any better. They thought by doing that, they can get to the top and stay on top. The question is, cause the consequences is too heavy. It will come down and it will come down with an iron fist. No one can escape it. So understanding this, all this becomes futile. All this becomes uh, unnecessary. It will still happen because not everyone can take this in. So what you can do in this kind of turbulent world is you can hold yourself accountable. No one else. They can do whatever they want because you cannot restrain them. But you can only, you know, you do what you have to do uh, to avoid falling into this pit. It's, it's a huge maelstrom, a tornado, whatever that is. It will drag, drag you in without saying anything. You, you, you might not be aware of it. Um, it will change your behavior slowly when you are in it enough, immersed enough in this kind of um, society. So just be very careful, understand, you know, we always get close to the good teachers, you know, good role models, good examples. And, you know, we have Buddha's teaching, we have venerables, we have hopefully your Dharma plays, Dharma friends, you can learn from them. And no one is perfect, but we can learn from a, um, an example people shown you, you know, uh, despite, you know, this uh, world, you know, where being good means weak, you know, being a bully means strong, even though their mindset is like that either socially, emotionally, physically, right, sexually, whatever. It's not um, be or and or, you know. Uh, people who are able to withstand this humiliation, withstand this kind of, you know, verbal bully, emotional bully or whatever kind of bully and not being moved will be the real winner. Unmoved, you know, unmoved by this turbulence. How do you be unmoved? You need to have a massive energy behind you and that energy cannot accumulate if our heart is scattered everywhere we need to concentrate on the teachings we need to concentrate ourselves on what is the right thing to do despite what other people say what perception people have um, because in the end of the day you know all this illusion what is fate will fall apart it will not hold ground and when crisis happens when situation happens the truth will come up. And then if you do it right by others, you do it right by yourself, you do not betray your own conscience. What you do is not, you know, at the expense of others. Even though you don't get a huge benefit or maybe you didn't get promotion or you didn't get any, you know, high ranking or high um, enjoyment, privilege, 
your merits has accumulated and it will come out one day. Why right? either this life or next life. So this is for sure. This is how it works in history. Uh, and it still happens right now. So what we need to do, right, is to understand our heart. Why are we doing this? Are we doing it right? If not, why are we continuing the habit that is destructive? Why are we not reflecting ourselves? Why, why can't we get out of it? Why are we continuing the habits, you know, that is, you know, in line with negative karma? Why can't we get a positive karma out of it? So we need to get back that ruler, that ruler. We need to get back that standard. And we need to ask ourselves to help accountable to that standard. For example, if you find yourself a bit loose with your cultivation, you find yourself a bit lack, you know, never seldom touch the sutra, seldom understand the teaching anymore. And you find yourself even more lost in your own wandering thoughts, desires and turbulent, you know, then it's time for you to go back, to go back to the sutra, let go of all this mess, you know, you write, I write, you know, whoever, the politics and all that. Let go of all these desires. I want this, I don't want this. I like this, I don't like this. Uh, she did this to me, he did this to me. All these things need to let go and focus only on the Dharma. If you don't, the result is you're going to have a variety of karma to deal with. And you create this kind of path yourself because this thing is subconscious. It's not just you think about it, it just go on and, until you make it you know, you, until you change course, you will keep walking down the path. Next time you see this person, this impression get stronger or hear this person, this impression gets stronger. And then it, it, it twisted, it, it keeps going down that path of retaliation or you do whatever it takes to get what you want and at the end of the day, only to lose it very quickly. You know, okay? the way you get it is the way you lose it. All right. So if you do it right, like Mr. Leo Fan, show you how to do it right. You know, for the worldly desires, how you do it right, still have to go back to fixing your attitude, fixing your uh, your mindset. Like, why do I lack confidence? Why do I lack, um, why do I give rise to wandering thoughts and affliction and troubles, even nothing happening? See? So this book, we need to go back. We still need to go back to Leo Fan after all these big talks. Because he's showing a real life example, how he go back, how he fix himself. And we need to fix ourselves. If you want to get anything resembling good in our life, um, going to Pure Land does not exempt us from changing our path right now. In fact, it is a necessary path. Right now, if you encounter issues in your current path, you know, in your current life, that means you need to fix this before you can open up the path to pure land. All right. If you haven't encountered it before, maybe the help will be there. But you already encounter it now while you're alive and breathing, aware of pure land and all that. You have to fix this obstacle, you know, as much as you can. You cannot allow it to fester into a cancer, you know, from a little lump into cancer. You have to uh, cut it off. Just like Mr. Leofan said, just like the poisoned have already expanded spread throughout your limbs you need to make that split second decision of the limb yourself cut off your limb to avoid hurting the entire body hurting your life all right small error is like the um getting poked by you know needles being poked by uh, thorns you need to take it off big error you know like your mind poisoned of your mind you need to cut it off, cut off the source, like you cut off your limb when it was being poisoned. When your left arm is being poisoned by snake, you cut off the whole left, uh, left arm so that you don't hurt the, the body, you don't hurt the life, so that you're still alive. So this is how it works. No hesitation, very, very firm. And then continue, reflect on every single word, every single deed you do. Only then you can have a chance at turning things around, you know. So 
it has to go into the roots of your mind and actually change it. You can't just one off and then you fall back again. One off and then you fall back again. It's it's an ongoing thing. You have to keep go doing that. Because the alternative is you're gonna fall back to this state where, you know, you're gonna follow the flow of the world, you know, that only focus on temporary pleasures, temporal um, solutions, you know, temporal mindset. Uh, at the expense of uh, long-term happiness, long-term security, long-term um, merits. Uh, this is the current of the world, and we need to be very careful not to fall into it. Especially, you know, everyone very heavy on, you know, material comfort, very heavy on gaining fame, gaining influence, those kind of you know, you know, trying to get on top of other people, competitive against other people, is what makes this world even more um, harder to live on. It creates unnecessary ple- uh, pressure that hurts a lot of people, that hurts um, the ecosystem. Because sometimes um, everyone has their own path, and as long as you guide them right, they will naturally grow into a strong um, influential individuals by 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 themselves they, without trying to seek for it um, and 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 the and this fame and fortunes and influence they are all uh, fruit fruition of merits without being virtuous without your um, being a right character right person without your heart in the right place those things will only harm you poison you not help you to accumulate even more merits and fortunes so this is a tool if you don't use it properly it will hurt you it will harm you in the end so the priority should be always on building a right character not chasing another digit in your book it's such irony when i say that because the mindset i have cultivated in in my working bank is to get more profits but if we understand this then we understand okay even our job is to do that how do we get profits where uh, and how do i deal with my own uh, colleagues and how do i deal with the external world you know clients and stuff like that the character is also very important but in the end of the day this is a profit based mindset not a cultivation true cultivation so that's why you see many accomplished individuals, especially cultivators. They are very focused and successful in their fields. They can do very well in what they're doing because their concentration is there. They do not falter. They have disciplines. They wake up early. They arrive on time. They have a set of rules and understanding. They're thorough in, in what they have to do. And then they get things done properly. They do them right, do right by other people. And then when they reach to the top, they understand that all these are futile. You know, all this thing they chase, you know, it's becoming a service thing. And they let it go and then they focus on cultivation. But this is not something I can say myself because I'm I can't even do well in a worldly matter. So that's that's why we need to fix ourselves. You're on this path because you you know because you have something to finish and you have to finish this journey, otherwise you go in nowhere. Without um further ado, we'll continue. Only when we have allowed the kind environment of kindness, environment of compassion to grow, will we have a resemblance of a happy life, not just for yourself, but for your society, your community, your country. That mindset cannot exist when everyone's going, racing to the bottom line, trying to step on one another in order to get profits for the sake of only profits. And that's why the teaching of karma is important because even you are going for you know profits going for um maximizing your benefit interest if you harm other people in in the way of doing it or if you're not doing it right if you cut costs or not cut costs if you find a shortcut you know you undercut what you promised what you promised to deliver to other people 
you will not get anything back. You know what you what you get, what advantage you get, will be costly in return. So it will be very expensive to actually do it uh, wrong, uh, rather than do it right and do it, you know, in 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 in, in due procedures. So that's why we need to be very careful of our mind, because our heart is such a subtle thing. Every time we soak ourselves in this poison, we 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 practice again, you know. We repeat this mindset, and then we act accordingly like that. We doubt other people. We start to, you know, scheme. We start to, you know, trying to undercut other people instead of doing right by your products, by your own job, uh, and move on. Um, that kind of life is also very tiring because you keep guessing, second guessing other people, and there is not one moment of peace living like that. So in education, we talk about family education, society education, and school education. All these three has to work. You know, not just uh, lacking one part, we will not be able to produce a help well, wholesome individuals. <sighs> okay. Second half of it is talking about using your own smart, you know, your little wit, intelligence to trick sentient beings, to trick everyone else, thinking that you got away from it. Um, remember, simpletons in this case is not saying that you are undereducated, you are, you know, from a country you never learn, you never study, you never know the big world. No, those things can learn later. So the main point is people without um, wisdom. Wisdom does not directly relate to um, educational background. You, know, you can be a farmer for your whole life, never read a book and still be wise in your conduct. That means you do things that yields positive results, not negative results. And positive means positive karma, positive action. That means the way you interact with people is wise. The way you do things is wise. Um, on the other hand, one person can be studying all the all there is to offer in the world. They can even go to Harvard, they can even go to the most top echelon of the society and still be a simpleton because they do not know how to engage others wisely, how to do things wisely. They all have all they have is technical knowledge, you know the know-how. Those are mechanical stuff. You memorize, you get used to it, you practice a lot. It's important, but it has to. We need both, you know, in order to be complete. Um, but in this case, we talk about wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom means able to find out what is right, what is wrong, what is real, what is fake, or what is genuine what is apparent um, without this ability without this understanding of discerning right from wrong we could not navigate the world properly we could not do things right and we might put a lot of effort a lot of knowledge that we learn from schools from work into something but the result is causing more harm right for example um, atomic bombs Right. It's one of the best example. I couldn't say anything. Everyone is smart. Everyone is amazing. Justification is, you know, the enemies were building one, so we have to build one. And then when they already spend so much money in it and the enemy already fall before they finish it, they continue. They study that, they continue, they finish it, and then they actually create an A-bomb because the rest of the world are doing that. So this is combining both competition, a very, like, Zero sum game because basically it's either you or me. There's no both of us. And then combined with you know these weapons that you cannot reverse, you know, atomic bomb. Once you release it, you cannot go back. It's not one off. It's hundreds of years. 
And then now it has been perfected to a point where it will stay for hundreds and thousands of years, um, making the world unsustainable, unable to believe, unable to live in. So that's not wisdom. That is with very smart people, very smart people gathered together doing this um, in order to, you know, fight the war, thinking that it might win the war. But, you know, lacking this wisdom, everyone, um, you know, everyone went to the path of no return. Now we are living in this world of, um, well, back in the 70s, 80s, even now, we still under we still have this looming threat of atomic warfare. No matter what happens, it's all it all it takes is few major countries with atomic arsenal to nuclear arsenal to actually trigger it, and the whole world will just go away like this. If we bring out different example like cult, you know why is cult? A lot of people have heard of cult. They are people use uh, well, very charismatic people you know tricking a lot of university people well educated people into a cult you know using some sort of theory some sort of understanding and they all follow foolishly even though they all studied they all you know have understanding knowledge but but they they follow it the cult and ended up you know doing harm than good because they're not spreading the words that's helping people towards um, you know understanding karma you know do right by others instead they become a tool for this um cult leader to gain money gain influence because you came from this prestigious university uh, prestigious institution so people might think oh what you say must have a substance in it you have reputation and all that so without wisdom right no matter how many books you study is useless and the effort you put in, you know, all the smarts and intelligence, it's not going to help you. It's going to cause the problem. So wisdom is able to pick where to go, all right? Where do to pick what path that actually leads to a happy outcome? That's wisdom, all right? The rest is like, you know, actually do that, actually getting there, actually accumulate that merits and fortunes and all the knowledge. Those are step by step. Those can follow later. But without wisdom, you do not know what is right and wrong in the first place. How do you even do it? Uh, how, uh, how do you use your knowledge to the right place? All right? Use your influence to the right place. Use your fame to the right place. So wisdom is very important. With wisdom, you can use your wealth to the right place. You can use your wisdom to the right place. You can um, lead yourself and others to the right place. What is the right place where everyone actually uh, live a not very... Where everyone actually achieve happiness so understanding importance of wisdom how do we get to a point where we are not confused anymore we will know what we're doing we know where we are and how we get there where we want to go how we get there and how do we do it right you know, that's when we need to hear the Dharma. That's when we need to hear words from the wise people. Dharma is the words from the wise people, right? And then we need to, we haven't reached that yet. Even we hear the words from the wise people, we might not be able to understand it. So we need to have understanding of the character of the people who give the Dharma, Buddha. That's why we do Buddha stories and all that. And with the understanding of that character, we need to have patience to get there. We are not getting there in one day, one year, even five years. Depends on the state of your mind. Of your mind. If you're not ready, if you kept, keep getting distracted, if you have so many rubbish in your heart that you haven't cleaned up, then you need to take need longer time. You need to actually went through life and actually suffer through it and understand oh this is not right hopefully we don't have to go to that level before we come back to the path and actually walk completed so we need to have faith in the people who give the talk give the dharma so that means you need to understand who gives the dharma you need to understand what is the dharma all right that's why we need to listen we need to understand who is master Chinkong. what is he doing 
all these years. He has he proved himself, has Buddha proved himself, right? And then once you understand what he do properly, his story, his his chronicles, and and, and why he do that, we naturally have a sort of um, respect coming out of it. He could let go of all this power, influence, wealth, everything that most people work so hard, cracking their skull, cracking their we spend so much time and hours, so many autumns and winters trying to get there. Buddha just release it like that without anything in return. You know, he's not doing that for show or anything. He just let it go because he had found something better. And with that understanding, every word came from him does not come from the heart of wanting to get something on you. Because he, he could have done that. He have all that before he become a monk. That's his duty. That's his mission. All right, so because this is such a deep teaching, we need to be patient. We need to have faith in the teachers, and then we need to immerse ourselves day to day. No matter how annoying we felt at the time, how tired we felt at the time, how you know distracted we are, we need to like Venerable Wooding mentioned as well. Find a space for yourself just to listen to the Amitofo, just to listen to the Dharma. Don't, doesn't matter if you understand or not. It's just a moment for you to settle down and then you move on with your life. With chanting Amitofo, you can find pockets of time just to do it. Despite your desire, despite your trouble, despite your busyness. You know, busy does not necessarily mean productive, does not necessarily mean success. It means you're just doing a lot of things without knowing where you're going. That means there's no wisdom in it. Um, with wisdom, you can do things in order. No matter how messy it is, you're able to put it in priorities and able to do what really matters. That takes experience, that takes time. I'm talking about how to do things. Cultivation, same thing. Cultivation of what? Your afflictions. How many afflictions you have? Endless. And so how do you deal with it? One at a time. You can't just suddenly know it. Expect it. People did that. People got enlightenment straight away, but one in a million, one in a billion. Normal people like us, day-to-day -day people like us, if we really have the Dharma affinity, which we do, deep or deep or shallow, it depends on people. And then we, we need to go step by step. We need to actually be tested in our daily ordeals. It's not someone testing you. It's you, your habit testing you. You know, your impatience testing you in my case, your desires testing you, your lust testing you, your, um, your impatience testing you, yeah. So those things are testing you, right? Other people are testing you. You know, maybe people's words are not that smooth, not as respectful towards you. So how are you going to be angry? Your anger is testing you. Are you going to react? Are you going to be like that? Are you going to use their standards? If you spin by them, you forever be affected by others. You never change your life. If you're not moved by them, able to see through the phenomena, see through the tricks, see through what other people are trying to do through their actions, rather than affected by their actions, that's when you know you're getting better in your um, wisdom. Right? And then you're able to influence the outcome, not being influenced by others. This is where actual power comes in. Not because you do something to others. It's because you're able to see things as is. You're able to see through for thousands of phenomena into the core, the, the reality of things. You no longer be in a passive mode. You feel empowered. If you have, you feel, you know, no matter what happened, good or bad, high or low, you take it as is. You accepted it. You no longer allow your ego to control. Rather, you understand what you need to do. So if you're in this position, you're doing this for the team. You do what it, what it takes to get your team there. Fulfill your duty. And minimizing harm while trying to minimizing. If not, you know, accept the consequences. So those are really mature understanding. So Master Ching Kong, in this section, he talked about bodhisattvas. You know, the patience, the, the um, compassions of them. They make this Dharma alive by their example. 
um, by going through many many um, scenarios like helping people to you know change their path um, mm, they have to be really patient their mindset is not today tomorrow is as long as I'm breathing as long as I'm here I will continue striving to be more compassionate to be wiser to, why how you cannot have wisdom while being clouded by desires wisdom is like your cloud that covers your sunlight so imagine sunlight is your wisdom cloud is desires delusions you know all sorts of delusions in your life temptation in your life situation that happens to you in your life that you are um, not sure why what is called ignorance those things are covering you all right and wisdom means open up you know break through the clouds go back to your origin self which is ever shining ever omnipotent ever uh, everlasting you know white wisdom like sunlight it it it's shown upon everything else so i'm um, i'm using this to a dramatic effect so to speak so wisdom is the moment where the cloud no longer covers up everything you're able to see through the truth and that cannot happen when you're still spinning around you know what this person say to me what that person say to me i hate this i like this i want this i don't want this um that when you attach to this you cannot be wise you only can be wise when you're no longer attached to it um with wisdom you understand what needs to take what needs not to take what is needed to be done now what is not needed to be done once you finish it you do not leave a residue in your mind that's not easy that's mean that means you do not attach to yourself because because yourself i'm doing this you're thinking i'm doing this and then you start to think i like this i don't like this i feel like this i don't feel like this Be able to go through this honestly i'm not saying that you ignore it ignore you only make it worse but going through your mind you know going through your emotions honestly is very hard and then if someone's words are harder hard on you you need to understand whether they came from the right place or not the right place if they don't came from the right place ignore it if they came from the right place take what they trying to say rather than what they say able to do that you actually become like the land you absorb crap from people from animals but it becomes your nutrient and you able to nourish everything so that's a very positive um practical and positive outcome a positive mindset positive um outlook in life so buddhism is not all gloom and doom it's all about how you use your mind and you can't do that while trying to trick while trying to you know find a shortcut you have to do it earnestly you have to do it with you know respect with understanding um of cause and effect what is consequences what is not that's the basics what is right what is wrong you know um and hold on hold that line and understand um understand the situation if you understand the situation you able to apply the solution uh, apply the action accordingly we all need wisdom no matter where you are and not just apply to the buddhist or you know people trying to go and meditate on a mountain we need wisdom even more in our day-to-day -day life um everything else we do will become powerful multiplied once we have wisdom and wisdom cannot come without letting go of the compassion uh, letting go of sorry letting go of the desires it has to come with you know letting go of your attachment if you can then there's no wisdom there's only um there's only ignorance act out of ignorance unaware of what actually happens unaware of actual reality actual consequences you thought this is right they thought this is that is right that's what we call small wheat so little wheat in uh, a little uh directly translated with chinese xiao chong ming so like wheat of a raccoon wheat of a mouse you know thinking they know they trick the system of woe um 
without realizing that they still aren't able to escape from their fate. Um, so we don't want to be that kind of person. You know, it means you have to go back to the more grounded part in yourself and say, what do I do? What am I doing? What can I do better to get there from now, not just tomorrow, right? Sleep, sleep, wake up, wake up. And then if I have not been in contact with Sutra, do it again. Contact with Sutra. You know, get that familiarity with the wise people and now we don't have people next to me teaching us or temple next to me we need to have the sutra then or master ching Kong's teaching or whoever speaks to you a proven record of themselves being kind and good and actually you know genuine not not a cultist so that's it um and you don't have to do a lot you just need to do one thing right every day a little bit a little bit a little bit change your attitude a little bit right if you think a lot if you have so much trouble and chaotic learn to hold five minutes without that coming in learn to create that five minutes of quiet in your life 10 minutes 15 minutes expand it if you don't even have mood to read listen to the to the chanting observe the flow of your mind come and go and not move by it stop being dragged like a cow, like a cattle. Stand your ground. Look at them. Look them in the eye. Understand all these emotions, these feelings, where they came from, what's the source of it, what triggers it, where does it go afterwards. Today is very raw, tomorrow is less raw, and then third day you forgot about it, or it's gone. And then you move on. So that's how you open up, and you no longer get uh, worried. So what you lack maybe in work, you know, you're unable to speak as well as others, you are lacking confidence, all this is because you have so much wandering thoughts, you keep saying, I can't do this, I can't do this, you know, where your job requires to do that, or your duty requires to do that, or you want yourself to be able to get above, across, you know, others, then slow down, read, read people's emotions, read people's feelings, connect with them, understand them. Don't talk too much. Just listen. Smell. You know, little things. Start from there. And slowly you will you will you will improve your ability to communicate. Um, so I don't want to go too far off. Uh, these two phrases talking about cruel and petty as well, right? Unable to understand the biggest bigger horizon and stuck in, you know, the six rims mindset of, you know, Small mindset, you know, small mentality, unable to be um, aware of actual cause and effect in working, in order. So how do we fix it? The cause is already there, right? So how do we focus, how do we change the outcome? We only can fix it from condition. How can we do condition right? We need to start breaking out, breaking up with what makes things worst. You know, the words that are hurtful, the thoughts that are hurtful, the action that are hurtful towards yourself and others. You know, you want to concur, you want to obtain, you want to um, covert, 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 you want to, you know, get what you, like say you want someone, you want something that others have. And you're trying to steal it. You're trying to use trick, trickeries to get it. So all these desires are, you know, leading you towards that path. So you need to stop that. You need to not allow it to happen. So stay away from the source of the temptation. If you have no choice, only keep it, you know, only stay when you have to. And then you move on with your life. I don't want to go too deep into that. So the whole point is, from your output, your speech, your thought, your word, you changed it a little bit, a little bit. You detect it. You you keep track of it. You make effort to do it, and then move towards a kind-hearted mindset, kind-hearted words, genuine kind words, genuine considerate actions, right? Compassionate heart, 
loving heart. Only when you purify this tree, you know, towards goodness, and then you purify it further without attaching to the goodness you did, only then you will be able to change your output, outlook in your life because you are harmonizing, you are, you know, repaying the um, gratitude towards everyone else, including your um, karma de debt, karma creditor. Everyone has a lot of karma creditors. Trust me, they make your life really hard. I'm not just talking about um, spiritual one, like, you know, the, the, the spirit beings, but also human beings. They can be a karma creditor as well, people that make or break you. You know, it, these are not fixed. This can be changed only when you change. So that's why we do the dedication of merit, all right? Because we're trying to change the karma for better, right? And then the best outcome is everyone go to pure land, no longer get stuck and get polluted again when we work so hard to get ourselves purified a little bit and then only to forget about it and get polluted again in next life. So that's, that's the whole set of system, you know? going on to help us to avoid getting more polluted, getting more um, confused, you know, going back to our true nature. Um, how do you co accumulate merits and virtues? Is it like by chanting 10 times Amitabha for I have the, the amount, does the amount count as merit? Or, you know, I chant 500 times, uh, 10 times, uh, in Finite Life Sutra or whatever the good sutra you have read or even Bible or even Quran or, or good books you know that teach people to be kind and good it, it's not the amount you chant it's the heart is your mind in connection with the teaching do you get it right some people get it one time for me I can't get it one time I need repetitions I need five repetitions six repetitions seven repetitions then be honest with it. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm trying to understand. I genuinely want to understand. Use that mindset. Not just trying to get 1 to 10. You actually want to connect to the teachings. Connect to the Amitofo's mindset. If you're learning this. So how do we know when we're connected? Our actions, our deeds, our behaviors, you know, our speech aligns with the teachings so how do we know when we align to the teaching if we stop less being self-centered less being all you know in your mind your head kind of mind rather you're all aware of everyone else aware of yourself aware of others aware of how you think of others aware of how others think of you and then you're more um, open to help people and and able to right, understand what is right and wrong you know so your action, if it's selfish, if it's you know self overly self-centered, or your action is considerate, or really kind, really respectful, which one is it? If it's the former, that means we haven't changed ourselves around properly. That means we're still gonna suffer from this karma. If we it's the if it's the latter, we understand how to really take care of people, really respect of people. You know, no matter how awkward you may seem like, you break through that shell and actually connect, engage. You'll be more receptible, receptive of others and others be more receptive of you. That's how you understand being good is not just, I think I'm good, it's actually connecting and actually, you know, pay people real respects. And you treat other people like you treat Buddha or treat whatever, the God. You know, you treat them with respect, the same way you will treat your own teachers, your own God. Then only then you have merits, and because it becomes something strong in your, it becomes something that can affect your actions, your words. Uh, and you, you equally respect to everyone else. Uh, if you only respect to God, respect to Buddha, but you treat other people with disdain. Same thing, you hate this, you like this, blah, blah, blah. In equal, unequal understanding of, of relationships, then you and your merits are not complete. Or I would say there was no merits. You only have um, maybe fortunes, good fortunes. On your full meal, you full the meal. Because, you know, 
it, it, it's it's equal relationship. You know, no matter what circumstances they met, that because it's their karma, you can't solve their karma. They reap what they sow, but what you treat them, the attitude you treat them, something we can change. All right. So we need not only to understand the words of the Dharma, we also need to put the Dharma in practice and actually understand what it means in action. Only then there is energy, there's power coming out of these teachings. That's why a lot of people feel like, including myself, feel like, oh, that's not going nowhere, lacking confidence or lacking that motivation because we didn't push it further enough make it into practice no matter how much we stumble we still do it all right and yeah once we do it we understand this works this does not work only then we know actually how to practice in daily life all right then our chanting sutra chanting has true benefits that we can dedicate to all right these are just training our habits to dedicate merits but we need to actually cultivate merits to have something to give them it's like you keep talking about oh, money is good, money helps people, uh, money can uh, help to build amenities, save a clean water, but you don't know how to do it. You, you didn't earn money, you didn't actually know how to do it. Then how do you actually give people merits then? Right? It needs to put in actions. All right? Otherwise, this dedication is just a show. It's not real. So in the end of the day, we need to start from you know, our heart our words, our action. And then we do it step by step. The how is from the sutra. It's from the teachings. You know, simple thing. It doesn't have to be very complicated. Slowly increase your standards and skill as you more skillful in there. In Buddhism we use the word skillfulness. I love this. It's all about skillfulness. Everyone when we start we stumble. Even when we have not when we thought we'd been practicing Buddhism for many years, but our action is still not in accordance with the Dharma. That means that we haven't properly learned at all. So we still treat it as a real beginner. Right? I experienced this firsthand in work as well. No matter how long you have done, you thought you're doing a lot, but then realize there's a gap in your actions, in your work um, process. Then you understand I have to start from the scratch because I haven't done it properly. I'm not tight tight enough with my procedure. So the thing I do still have problems, even though it's not detected yet. So 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 cultivation, same thing. You can use it in other places in your life. Um, that's why we have this book, Treaty on Response and Retribution. Although it's a bit long, it's a bit winded, this is telling you what to do, what not to do, in essence. All right? Um, and it's used to reflect ourselves. And then act on it, you know. When they tell you don't do this, don't do it. Do the opposite, all right? They tell you don't be dishonest, be honest, be genuine, be real. You know, you can still protect the interests of your group, but you still need to be honest about it. You don't undercut people, all right? All right, so let's dedicate our merits and uh, virtues. Hopefully, we uh, after this session, we'll be more motivated to get there. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, leave the teaching for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Thank you, Andis Yenzi. Thank you, everyone. Amitofo. Amitofo. A me to for 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 A me to for